You're listening to The Authentic Podcast, and today it's a word of the Lord called The Great Effective Door. If you haven't checked out The Authentic Podcast before, we give words to body. We also do live streams where there is healing, prophetic words, and even deliverance. There are a lot of teachings that I upload, as well as having guests on to discuss the goodness of God in the land of the living. If this authentic podcast has blessed you, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel or share the videos or like them as well. And if you want to sow deeper into the authentic podcast, there is a giving link below in the description. My wife and I also have a ministry called Psalm 72, and if you know of it or want to know more, there is a link for that and a tab for missionary giving as well. All right, let's get into the word. So the Lord spoke to me that a wide open door for effective work is getting ready to open up for the body of Christ, and I could not be more excited. Like, you know, when you're doing something and it's going well and and like all is well, but then like God anoints it and he just puts his favor on it. And it's just like the floodgates have opened up for you and, and it just seems to come a little bit easier or smoother. I feel like that is what is coming for the body of Christ. God spoke to me out of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 8 and 9. It's a very short little blurb, but when I was reading it, he started to download this word to me. It says, but I, and this is Paul speaking, will stay on at Ephesus until Pentecost because a great door for effective work has opened to me and there are many who oppose me. Now, there is a two-part word to this verse. It's saying, hey, there's a great effect of work, but also there are those many um, that oppose me during this work. So yes, when God anoints something, it seems like there's favor on it. It seems like it's multiplying and flourishing, and it goes smooth and easy in that sense. But that doesn't mean that there aren't other voices that are trying to thwart what God is doing or oppress what God is doing. And in this next move, in this mini season, um, hopefully it's not a mini season. I, I feel like... It's a multiple year stretch where God is just going to open it up for great effective work. And what that work looks like is evangelism. It looks like souls. It looks like the body of Christ looking like the body of Christ. It looks like um, the equippers equipping the saints and getting disciples raised up, warriors raised up. I just see a, a quickening in the body of Christ and a strengthening that is getting ready to come you will find that it'll be easier to share the gospel because there are going to be people so desperate for the love of God, for a touch of God, that you'll just say the name of Jesus and they'll actually be like, tell me more. You'll start to share your testimony and they'll get hooked and entranced, if you will, about what God has done in your life. I just believe that the harvest is going to be easier to reap than in years past, but that does not mean that there isn't opposition coming. And the Lord spoke to me out of Acts chapter 19 about a um, a silversmith. His name is Demetrius. And this is one of the people that opposed Paul when he was staying at Ephesus during this great effective door. And what's really crazy about De- Demetrius is he gathered all of these people. They were, they were making idols. They were um, doing all of these works. And Paul was actually taking away work from them because he was like, hey, hey, you don't need idols. You don't need anything else. Like just follow the Lord Jesus Christ. He's enough. What he did for you is enough. Sharing the gospel message. And Demetrius and all these people were upset. So he started a riot against Paul. And everyone's like, Paul, don't go down there, man. Like it's it's not good. Like they really want your head. Um, and there was all these people that were confused and just brought in with all of this anger. It was like this mob mentality. And this is what's really crazy The name uh, Demetrius means earth lover. So we know that we cannot love the world, the earth, the world, and be a friend of heaven. We'd actually be an enemy of God by loving the world. And if we want to gain our lives in this earth, we can't try to find it in this world. We actually have to lose our life in this world and find the new one that is hidden in Christ So this guy is standing for lovers of self, lovers of the world. This is the the figure, the type that he is representing. And Demeter is the Greek goddess of corn and the harvest. And that's what Demetrius means. It means um, 
a follower of the Greek goddess of corn and harvest. So here you have a person who loves the world that is representing a, a figure uh, of self-love, of loving the world and wanting to reap a demonic harvest, w wanting to reap a confusing, um, a, a divided harvest um, to sow and to plant seeds of deception and divide and to um, grow in, in like anger towards the Christian faith. This is what this type, this Demetrius is standing for. So even though there was this great effective door that was opened up for Paul, there was a type, a shadow that was opposing him in this opposition. And ultimately this did fizzle out. Um, but that doesn't mean that there still weren't people that were angry and upset and opposing the works of God during this point in time. And this is another verse that he linked and, and, Really, this is the heart of what God is showing me for this word, for this effective door that is getting ready to open up. Um, it's in Luke 19, and it, it talks about not recognizing the day of visitation. And God showed me that when he opens up this door, it's almost like um, the demonic door, their access is going to get shut. So how do I want to say this? he showed me a picture of like two armies fighting and a big stone just being rolled right down the middle of the demonic army. And it's going to create um, a big highway for God's people just to channel through. It's almost like we just cut right through the demonic and we're going right into the hearts of men and women when we're evangelizing and doing these effective works. But he also showed me it's like the enemy's gate got shut and they were using that gate to come in and out, but it got shut. So now they're trapped and we actually have the opportunity to like utterly destroy the enemy in the season. But mind you, the enemy is going to have its back up against the wall. Now the gates of hell will not prevail, right? The church will overcome them. And especially through the power of the blood and the word of our testimony, this is how we overcome the world. This is how we overcome the demonic is by putting on our armor, by covering ourselves in the blood of Jesus, by recognizing the sacrifice that he has done for us, living in love and declaring the goodness of God in the land of the living through our testimony and the works of the completed works of the cross of Jesus Christ. So the enemy is going to have their back up against the wall and they're going to raise up people like Demetrius to come against Christian movements because we're getting ready to see cities won over for Jesus, towns won over for Jesus, states won over for Jesus. I, I see like a very big move of God where like Jesus is the majority by far. But there are going to be these people that that rise up against that that create these, I don't want to say cult like, but create these very religious groups that oppose what is going on. And they're going to be loud and they're going to take us, try to take us before the court, before council, before the president, before the Congress. And there's going to be these big legal battles that are going on. But in the interim, in the, in the in between, we're going to be seeing a big harvest of souls. I'm telling you, this door that is being opened is wide. And this is exciting, guys. You're going to be evangelizing one day and, and you're just going to say the name of Jesus. And people are going to be like, I want to know more. Tell me more. Because they're going to be so hungry and thirsty for the truth, guys. We've had so many lies, so much deception just shoved down our throats, blasted into our eyes, poured in, you know, into our ears. And what we're going to see is a generation that literally says, I just want the truth. And we know the truth, the way and the life. And his name is Jesus Christ. But in this, there's opposition. And um, this is kind of what the picture, what it's going to look like during this time. And, and you'll find this verse, um, these verses in Luke 19 where it talks about the day of visitation and um, the enemy is going to create a barricade against the church and the church is actually going to be sorted because of the blindness that it carries. And, and let me, let me read this and I'll explain it a little bit more. This is verses 41 to 46 in Luke 19. As he approached Jerusalem, he saw the city and wept over it. This is Jesus in the spiritual ignorance of its people saying, if only you had known on this day of salvation, even you, the things which make for peace and on which peace depends. 
but now they have been hidden from your eyes. For a time of siege is coming when your enemies will put up a barricade with pointed stakes against you and surround you with armies and hem you in on every side. And they will level you on the ground, you Jerusalem and your children with you. They will not leave you one stone on another, all because you did not come progressively to recognize from observation and personal experience the time of your visitation when God was gracious towards you and offered you salvation. Jesus went into the temple enclosure and began driving out those who were selling, saying to them, it is written, my house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a robber's den. So what this big effective door is going to look like is it's going to look like the church being separated. Um, and that seems like a, a negative thing, but it's actually a good thing because there are those in church that don't understand what making peace looks like and, and what the actual principles of peace are built on and rely on. And what they're doing is they're creating division saying, oh, you go to that church. Well, we go to this church and it's better. Oh, you believe that? Well, that's false doctrine. That's of the devil. You know, and there's these, these churches, these quote unquote Christians that are sharing um, who they believe to be Jesus, but is completely false. They're sharing this doctrine that is completely false. There's no truth in it. It is all lies and deception. And it's literally from hell. They're being deceived because they are looking to please themselves. They are looking to erect idols to themselves. And it's crazy because it is not built on peace. It's actually built on ungodly division and God doesn't like this and it's getting ready to be exposed and torn down. But in this place of separation and division and like this ugly stuff being exposed, we are going to find a great harvest that is going to be coming into the church. And this I'm very excited for because Jesus is saying, I'm bringing redemption. I'm bringing salvation. I'm bringing a time of visitation. We know that God works in times and seasons. So just because it is a certain time or a certain season, that doesn't mean it's going to be 24, seven, 365, you know, the entire time all throughout the years, there are times and seasons allotted that could come only every 20 years, every 50 years, every hundred years, they could last for a year. They could last for three months. But I feel like this wide effective door that is getting ready to open up is for about four to six years. And it's going to be starting in about, I don't know, eight to 14 months is what I get. And it's just going to be this grace that God opens up in the spirit. And we need to be getting ready now. We need to be equipping people to go out. We need to be mobilizing people to go out and evangelize and share the gospel in power and with love and with grace. Guys, this isn't a time to be backslidden or hiding. This is a time to press forward. God is getting ready to sling a rock into the enemy. It's going to shut up their gates and we're going to be able to utterly destroy them. It's like God is just going to multiply our efforts and it's going to be anointed and seem far easier than it has in years past. But we need to be prepared for and aware of the legal battles that are going to be coming, as well as these Demetrius type figures that are trying to reap a demonic harvest and thwart what God is getting ready to do. So here's some encouragement. We know that Jesus is getting ready to open up a door, so we do not want to be blind and we do not want to miss our time of visitation. So let's find two or three people, let's find a group, let's start pouring into them and equipping them and getting them ready for evangelism, getting them ready to share their testimony, a two minute version of their testimony, getting ready to um, share the gospel and the word of the Lord with other people in real time getting people equipped to talk back and forth with the Holy Spirit and be ready to um, just step out in bold obedience at, at any point in time. And, and just know that we have victory in Christ, that Jesus has already overcome the world, that there is nothing for us to fear. Do not fear man who can kill the body. And then after the body is dead, do nothing with it, but fear the one who can kill body, but also put the, put the, kill the soul or put the soul in hell or something to that effect. It's like God has final say over our lives. And our job is just, just to share his love is just to be a mouth, a mouthpiece, hands and feet, a body and open vessel for him at any point in time. 
But guys, there's getting ready to be a, a harvest that is coming very, very soon. And we are going to be able to reap and bring many souls into the kingdom. We're going to see many souls leave the kingdom. Um, but these are like the false ones, the fake ones, the, um, the religious ones, the deceived ones, um, you know, ones that say um, things are okay, that there isn't a hell, that it's all right to be man and man, woman and woman. We're getting ready to see the church get cleaned out. And that's the latter verse that the Lord gave me in Luke 19, where Jesus actually fashioned a whip. He sat there in patience, looking at everything, um, observing everything. And his anger started to to kindle with what it, um, has been taking place in his body, in his father's house. And, and this is what's getting ready to happen. Jesus has been fashioning a whip and he's getting ready to unleash it. Um, when, when this stone gets thrown, this door gets open and the gates um, get shut off and the enemies are actually going to be left outside of their camp. He's going to come. And, and when I say enemies, these are the, these are the, the quote unquote Christian church people that are, are really not Christian church people. These are like those um, Judaizers, those, um, you know, fake Christians who infiltrated camps to like spy and, and see what's being said and to um, plant seeds of deception. Like Jesus is getting ready to unleash a whip that is going to clear out the temple, that is going to clear out the body. And um, you're going to see a lot of um, one legal battles too, even um, opposition between Christians because there's going to be a great division but you're going to see so many people come in because there's going to be um, non-believers that thought, oh, well, all of this stuff seems to be okay. So why would I even want to be a Christian? I, I do this already anyways, but they're actually going to hear the truth for the first time. I just feel like there's going to be a loudspeaker for truth and it's going to cut into a generation that has been craving it for a very long time. And um, that, that influx of Christians because we have taken this time before the door has opened to, to, to um, prepare disciples, those disciples are going to go and make more disciples and equip. And it's just going to be like this revolving door that continues to remain open for about four to six years I am seeing. So guys, be encouraged that a door is opening up, that your efforts are going to be increased and multiplied in this upcoming season. So I just want to pray for you um, over this. So Father, I thank you for the individuals that have a heart for souls to be saved. God, I thank you for those that want to see souls saved, but they don't, they don't have a burden for it. God, I pray that you increase the burden in their heart for souls. God, you said that the harvest is ripe, that it is ready, but there are few that are able to go out into the harvest that we should be praying for harvesters, praying for workers. So I just pray and declare that the workers will increase right now. Those that love you will increase right now. Those that don't think they're evangelists just need to go read Matthew 28 and realize that they are, that they'd be raised up. They, they would be starting small groups. Father, I thank you for on fire people surrounding on fire people. Those that are getting prepared with their testimony, two minute 30 second versions of their testimony to just go and spread the gospel. God, I just pray for boldness to come upon them, God, that they'd be able to just to step out when you nudge and tug on their heart to just go and share Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you that when this door is opened, it is going to be easy to reap the harvest that you have sown, Lord Jesus. God, may you get all of the glory. May you receive those that the Father has given you. God, we declare that you will get the full price that you paid for with your body and your life on the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless y'all.